Um, and next up, we have Minal Mishra from Netflix to talk about enabling streaming experiments at Netflix. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Minal Mishra, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, how we stage rollout of the Netflix streaming player in order to enable frequent streaming experiments of this video player. So uh, a little about myself. I started my career at Xbox when it used to be a big black box with a green X on it. And then I moved on to the Zune team. I can describe that device for you, but I doubt anybody remembers them. <laughs> um, the logical next step after working on a games and a music uh, digital service was to work on a video service. So here I am at Netflix. Uh, trying to make the streaming uh, player delivery more efficient and reliable. So a little about Netflix, uh, some interesting stats. Uh, we have about um, 69 million customers over 60 different countries, which translates into 10 plus billion hours of video watched every quarter. And at peak, we are about 37% uh, of the downstream internet traffic in North America. Good reason to make uh, the streaming a little more, bit more efficient, right? Uh, the last point is the unique culture that we have. And in the coming slides, I'll touch on some of the elements of the culture and how it influences the engineering at Netflix. So not so long ago, a new happy user signed into Netflix, discovered a video that he wanted to watch, and hit the play button only to see the screen. How many of you remember the screen? Well, when I first saw the screen, my expression was similar to the primate on the screen. <laughs> so this was a forcing function for Netflix to change this experience and embrace a plug-in-free solution which was uh, provided by HTML5. We worked um, with the W3C standard to basically define extensions that would enable adaptive streaming playback of uh, protected content. So what is the streaming player client itself? Uh, before that, it, the, uh, the implementation is completely in JavaScript. And it's basically downloaded and executed in your browser context. So visualizing the flow on the right, when the user hits the play button, the website connects to the Netflix service, gets the uh, links to download the JavaScript assets, and uh, it would go, it would go pull the the JavaScript assets from the CDN, and your playback would start. So, what are, what is there some of the key features apart from what you can already see on the UI, uh, uh, which is uh, you know visible to the user? Uh, the, the key thing is adaptive streaming. Uh, the other features are authorization and authentication. We want to make sure you paid us. Uh, the um, logic to assist uh, decrypt and decode of the protected content. Stats to understand our customers' quality of experience. And logging to uh, understand, um, to basically collect uh, debug information and on, uh, you know, errors that you might be experiencing. So a little bit about the streaming experimentation itself. Um, metaphorically speaking, internet is built out of pipes of different sizes, which is delivering data at varying rates. Uh, sometimes same size pipes can deliver data at fluctuating rates, like the internet connection at my home. Uh, if you're listening, cable companies, uh, can my uh, monthly bill also follow that fluctuation? I would, I would really like that. <laughs> well, at the, at the other end of these uh, pipes are a plethora of smart devices with a spectrum of capabilities. And our job at Netflix is to balance the video experience triangle across video quality, rebuffers, and delay. Of course, this is very high level. 
if you talk to the streaming uh, experts, they will probably draw a polygon for you with multiple vert vertices. <laughs> um, so the, um, in addition to this balancing act, um, the Netflix A-B test culture has sponsored a big effort in order to make the streaming experience much better. And this only gets more valuable as uh, our aspiration to expand to the rest of the world by the end of 2016. Another key tenet of the Netflix culture is to improve the development velocity while not compromising on quality. It's uh, pretty essential for any internet company to you know, uh, operate in, within this tenet. Uh, so we have seen a lot of companies uh, implement and execute one of the variant of these pipeline. Uh, I'm not going to talk about our pipeline, but uh, I'm just going to talk about the block, uh, which requires deploying the, our streaming player to production and how we use that to mitigate some of the, uh, the risks. So canary deployment uh, is very popular, and we heard uh, some of the speakers talk about it as well. Uh, basically, you take the, the latest version of your software, take few servers, uh, server instances, uh, and uh, you basically um, enable them in production. These, uh, these instances are running in parallel with your production code, and basically you're collecting metrics and analyzing them to assess the health of uh, your latest code. Two key challenges for us was that the software that we own don't run on the servers in the Netflix cloud. They're running on your uh, laptops and PCs. S and second, we don't have instant, instant access to the metrics like the service applications do. So when we started off, we decided to leverage the, uh, the canary, canary testing of our website, which runs on the production servers. So what we did was we, we pushed we pushed the new version, N plus one, and a variant of the existing version, N prime, onto the CDN. And then we used the uh, canary and control clusters of our website to kind of point to these new instances. The ELB would basically uh, split the traffic depending upon the ratio of instances that, of server that you had in each cluster. Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of server instances to dedicate for uh, canary and control, so we would receive about 1% of the traffic for the, the new version of the player. And once the player, um, the users receive the players, they would basically report uh, stats partitioned by the player version. So, how did we assess the health of uh, our new version of the player. We basically <clears throat> use uh, some level, you know, some basic level of statistical analysis. Um, prior to that, determining what metrics we could use to determine the health was the key. We categorized our metrics into three, three groups. Raw count, which contained the start play counts and error counts uh, in production. QOE metrics, which is quality of experience, uh, correlates well with the video experience triangle that I was talking about earlier, and the error rates, uh, the start play error rate and the end play error rate. So if we drill down into one of the metrics on the error rate and look at some of its components, we would basically calculate the deviation, sorry, we would calculate the ratio of uh, mean values for the baseline and, which is the control and the canary uh, metric, and we would check deviation to assess the health of the canary. Uh, the amount of time that you ran your canary for, the more sample you, uh, you know, more sam data sample you collected, and the lower bound and the upper bound limits against the deviation, to, you know, determine pass, fail, and other states in the, in the canary scores. And then this would translate into an Uber canary score, which would basically, could be used to determine whether we want to roll out uh, our canary to everyone, or we want to roll back. So how, do we, how did we do with um, velocity and quality? Uh, 
This chart shows uh, our deployment frequency over the past 15 months until June of this year. And you can see more than 60% of our deployments happened uh, after we started the, the, the whole canary process. So it gave us a lot of confidence to be able to do that. Uh, in terms of quality, there were five issues that we actually detected in production, and we could actually trigger a rollback or a roll forward, depending upon the, the scope of the bug. So what happened since June? Well, we had a website update, and we had a uh, swanky-looking website now with a whole new tech stack. It also gave us the opportunity to uh, modify our whole deployment process. So what we did was we moved the logic to a layer. Uh, we moved the logic for sampling production into a layer that we control rather than depending on the ELB to kind of split the traffic between server instances. And like I said, it was basically a function of the number of instances in the cluster which determined how many users actually got um, the latest version of the player. So it basically evolved into a more phase rollout uh, kind of a system. Uh, we had uh, granular control over how many users, what percentage of our users got, uh, got the latest version of our player, which basically helped us uh, remove sampling bias at every stage. We were also able to basically determine platforms with low usage. Of course, not all browsers are as popular as Chrome, so we wanted to be able to uh, assess health on those browsers too. Uh, we didn't have to manage any server clusters or you know, maintain any server clusters. Of course, the drawback over here was we were not able to uh, do any comparison uh, of the raw counts. So this chart shows the, um, the, new, the pl new player uptake rate as we gradually control the, um, the percentage of users um, that get uh, allocated with for the new version. You can see that there is a ramp up time uh, uh, for version N plus one, around 120 minutes before it reaches a stable uh, distribution. In addition to that, there is a, uh, a key problem. The analysis that we do of version N versus the version N plus one was flaky. Only because we, uh, with version N, we had a larger sample size, so which resulted in metrics being a little bit more stable compared to um, the version N plus one, where the sample size was much smaller and we had a more noisy metric collection. So comparing to the, uh, those two me uh, metrics would actually give us uh, inaccurate results at the time. So we fell back to our original uh, way of doing things. We introduced a new N and prime version of the uh, player, which was a variant of the current production version. And we, would, we were comparing n prime against n plus one, where it was a little bit more apples to apples comparison. So in the end, it's basically a balance between uh, the customer impact you have and the signal evaluation, um, rollback and performance of the whole experience uh, have uh, implications for our customers, whereas uh, the, the metrics that we select, the sampling frequency, and the statistical analysis that we use have an impact on how strong the signal uh, you're receiving from your, uh, your analysis system. With that, uh, I, this is, we are just you know, scratching the surface of this whole process. If other folks have uh, done this before, we would love to hear from you, and also any other feedback you have on the system. Questions? Thank you. Um, so what kind of issues um, have you detected with this type of analysis? Have you, how were you able to pinpoint the issues after you detect that the build was bad? So uh, the uh, one issue that I can uh, you know recollect was uh, basically um, we deliver um, we deliver video at different qualities depending upon your uh, depending upon the bandwidth and your device capabilities, and there was a sorry 
repeating that. Uh, we basically deliver video at different qualities depending upon your um, network and your <clears throat> device capabilities. And there was a bug in the adaptive streaming layer where the average quality of the delivered video dropped significantly, and we were able to uh, compare the uh, the average weighted bit rate that we track as a metric across the two builds and determine that you know we introduced a bug and we could roll back instantly. So this is kind of, this is highlighting one of the issues that we found. There are several issues around it, a lot of a lot around error rates as well. Um, and one last question. Yes. Do these experiments affect enough users to cause significant complaints by those users? Um, is there a way to mitigate this? So uh, they, uh, the short answer is no, uh, because we are doing a lot of these experiments uh, behind the scenes, and we are doing it very frequently. You could see we were releasing our streaming player almost twice a week, and we do ex extensive analysis on the uh, the the. Um, the quality of experience that you receive when we're doing actually A-B tests. And uh, if there are any issues, we are instant, we can instantly resolve it and you know, give you a new version of the player. So we haven't had any customer complaints, and we're hoping we, we won't have any in the future as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>